considered to be the dean of American magicians. He's the foremost, most respected sleight of hand and close-up artist in the world. And this is a rare public appearance for Di Vernon. These days, he spends most of his time performing and lecturing fellow magicians only. Ladies and gentlemen, would you welcome the professor himself, Mr. Di Vernon. <laughs> You don't mind if I sit right here and watch everything close up, do you? Well, uh, no, I don't mind, but I should have enough sense at my age to retire, don't you think so? Never. I'm ne 81 years of age, and I've been... Oh, my. <laughs> Well, I, I've been studying magic for over 75 years. Then you ought to be able to make yourself 21. No, I wasted the first six years of my life. What'd you do? <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, I, I'm going to do two of the old classics of magic. You know, magic has classics just like uh, music or painting or sculpturing or anything else. Right. Now, in the old days, the magicians all used a wand. This is a collapsible for traveling, very convenient. Now, I'd like you to look at those, scrutinize those, see there's nothing wrong with them. They're free from guile. Free from guile, perfect. This, this one has a little guile in it, but the rest are all right. <laughs> okay. Now, these are, these are sterling silver, and the only peculiar thing about them is if you measure the inside depth of the cup, you see it's deeper on the inside than it is on the outside. Now, that explains why one cup will pass through the other. I explain everything as I go along. You can't go along. Now, I love now, it. I use these uh, three little crocheted balls, one on each cup, like this. All right. Now, in the old days, the magician used to rely on quickness of the hand to deceive you, but I'm going to do everything very slowly. I'll explain everything as I go along. Good. I won't make any fast moves. And any when you time. finish, will I know you, how to you do will. it? Ball okay. number one. Ball number one. You must have a wand. That's the main thing. You know, every time I do that, I feel that people think the ball is not actually in the hand. The ball is actually there. It's all in the power of the mystic wand. When you do that, it goes back to its little home again underneath the cup. <laughs> Guy, I had my nose right now in watch. there. I'm going to put one here, one here, and one here. Now, you take the wand and touch any cup you like. All right. Are you looking? No, I, no, it doesn't matter. Oh. I want to see where you... That one, the center one. All yep. right. Now, watch that very closely. I'll take it out there this way. Remove the ball. Now, you can't see that ball, but it's reposing on the top. Now, where shall I place it? On this side or that side? Ah, uh, place it on this side. This side. Watch. I'll, I'll let it walk over. Look. Lift the cup and see if it's there. Is it there? Oh! <laughs> now, it wouldn't have made any difference if you'd chosen the one on this side. You have to be ambidextrous to do this. You take it the same way, and it leaves there, and it appears over there, you see? So it doesn't really make any difference. Now, I'll show you how these balls will penetrate the cups. I'll show you this very... Look. If you do this like this, the ball goes right down into the cups like this. Now, I'll do that again. Watch. I'll make it penetrate one cup. You see, it goes right through. Right through. Now, the second one. Watch. Oh, oh there are the two of them. Two. Now, watch this very closely. I'll explain this so you can... One. Two. Can you see those two there? Yeah. Now, now watch this very closely. The third one. All three. Now, I'm going to show you how this is done, because I know it's fun to know how this thing is done. I'm going to make one more maneuver, then I'm going to explain this ancient game, because Great. really, this dates back to the days of ancient Egypt. It's a very old trick. And in the old days, they used to judge him a distant skill by how well he did the trick. But they used to work very rapidly. I'm going to do this very slowly. That's ball number one, ball number two, and ball number three. Say the magic word, and look, they all come together here, you see? Now, you probably think I didn't cover them in the first place. So, look, there's one there, one there, and one there. Now we got you. Now, look. One, two, three. Right. Now, this is very complicated with three balls and a wand, and I talk all at the same time, so I'm going to put one of these back in my pocket. I'll put this back in my pocket, and I'll put this one back in my pocket. Now, it's like the old shell game. All you have to do is remember that there's one there. Okay. But is there, is there one here? No. Well, you weren't watching, you see? The... <laughs> you weren't paying attention. 
Charles is a very shrewd, observing man, but he didn't notice when I took the ball. I saw him look over here. You see, he shouldn't be looking here. Oh! I, 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 I keep it as my pinky, and I drop it. You see, I drop it behind, behind the cup, so it's not really there at all. But <laughs> where does that one come from? That one has a thyroid. Now, how many, how many are there here? Look, there are two there. Two there. Two there. Now, look, you see that one jump out there? Yeah. Now, look, if I put these away, how many are there there? One. Well, lift whichever cup you think. It's here. Lift it up. Oh. Whoa! Oh. Whoa! Oh, there's oh, two. Oh, there's two. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's the way they go. But anyway, that's a very simple thing. Look, you can take a ball like this, a big ball this way, and you yeah. can put it here like that, and you can do that, and it seems to vanish. But that's called sleight of hand. See, when you spin the wand like this, you spin the wand and do that, it really goes right back inside the wand again. Yes. But anyway, I, that's an old trick. I want to explain how it's a done. good one.